Hi you guys, welcome back for our daily practice questions. As always, you know I like to first get into my introduction and disclaimer before getting started with our questions for today. So for those of you who are familiar with me, hey y'all. For those of you who are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Dr. Brittany Weinstock. I am a family nurse practitioner and I am the founder and CEO of The Nursing Studio. I provide resources, tools, review courses, review videos, review books, one-on-one -on -one sessions, and more to assist nurses as well as nurse practitioners with success on their boards as well as in practice. I've been doing this since 2015, assisting nurses and nurse practitioners internationally with exam success. Now, you know, I always like to go over my disclaimer reminder that we know there's no absolutes in medicine. We treat on a patient-by-patient -patient basis, and any of the questions that you see here, I have designed and created based on the current guidelines that are being tested on the ANCC as well as AAMP exam. Now, any of my videos where I'm teaching on things that we currently do in practice, I will always say that so there's no confusion. So with that being said, let's get into question number one for today. Question number one states, a 62-year-old male with a 35-pack year smoking history presents to the clinic with complaints of chronic cough and sputum production. He also reports increasing shortness of breath with exertion. Spirometry results shows an FEV1 of 72%. What stage of COPD does this patient most likely have? Is it A, stage one, the mild stage? B, stage two, moderate stage? C, stage three, severe stage? Or D, stage four, the very severe stage? Take a moment and tell me what you got, you guys. All right, so you know I always recommend reading the stem of the question first as it allows you to slow down to ensure you're answering what is even being asked of you. So here the stem of the question states, what stage of COPD does this patient most likely have? So we know there's four stages of COPD. And if you've been following the COPD series this week, um, let's test your knowledge and see how you've been doing with uh, retaining how to group and break down which stage we're in. But you know there's four stages. Now this patient has a 35 pack year history and spirometry result shows an FEV1 of 72%, right? So with 72%, what stage are we in? And the best answer is B, stage two, the moderate stage. Remember, from 80% and greater, that's stage one mild. And then from 79% to 50% is stage two. So this will be stage two. All right, question number two. A 70-year-old female with moderate COPD, stage two, has been diagnosed after presenting with increasing dyspnea and frequent cough. Her spirometry results show an FEV1 of 60%. She has had one exacerbation in the past year. The patient is currently using a Saba as needed. What is the next best step in her treatment? Is it A, long-term oxygen therapy, B, a Saba as needed, C, a Laba, or D, start systemic corticosteroids daily? Take a moment and tell me what you got. All right, so the stem of the question here states, what is the next best step in her treatment? All right, so when we're talking about treatment, you know, I always tell y'all, y'all need to run it back and look and see if they have provided you with a diagnosis. If they have not, then you need to run it back a step further and look at those assessment findings, right? But here they have given us a diagnosis. She has stage two COPD, right? Her FEV1 is 60%. She's had one exacerbation and she's currently on a Saba as needed. But what do we know about stage two? In stage two, yes, we know we continue our short acting, but we know we also want to introduce a long acting at this time, right? And also remember, Brittany's brilliance, we also um, introduce pulmonary rehab. Pulmonary rehab is two words, so we introduce it in stage two, right? But we already have this short acting on board. In stage one, we only need our short acting. Stage two, we want to add a long acting on with that short acting. And if they tell you it's flu season, make sure you're given the flu vaccine. So the best answer here is C, a lava. You can also utilize a llama, one of the two, long acting beta agonist or a long acting muscarinic agent. All right, and question number three, a 76 year old male patient with very severe COPD, stage four, is hospitalized after an acute exacerbation. His FEV1 is 25% and he has a and he has chronic renal failure. Despite using a LABA and a SABA as needed, he remains significantly symptomatic with severe dyspnea at rest. His oxygen sats are 88% on room air. What is the most appropriate next step in his management? Is it A, to continue the SABA as needed only, B, initiate a LABA, C, initiate an ICS, or D, start long-term oxygen therapy? All right, so the stem of the question here states, what is the most appropriate next step in his management? So we want to see what we need to do next most appropriately. 
And in this thing, he has a uh, stage four COPD. Now they have tried all of the steps. He has um, been on the LABA, the SABA, and now he's on stage four. So really and truly, stage three, we would have implemented an ICS. So know that he should be on ICS, and this is something that we can also utilize now. But the priority here is to start him on some long-term oxygen therapy. Why? You want to do this because, one, his SATs are already 88%. His FEV1 is remaining 25%, so he is in stage four. And you know in stage four, we want to make sure we start oxygen therapy. But in this event, um, I do want you to know that he should be on the ICS as well. And then, but here, priority, we want to go ahead and start that oxygen therapy, okay? All right, you guys, I hope you found this helpful. As always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share with whomever you may think may find this beneficial as well. But y'all know what to do. Y'all make sure y'all meet me back here. And if you need any of the resources that I do offer, feel free to reach out to the nursing studio by giving us a call at 803-400-6864. You can also shoot a text message to this number or shoot us an email to the nursing studio, the number one at gmail.com. All of the things that I do offer are linked in the bio of this channel. Um, my review book, you can either get it in an ebook or paperback option. If you'd like to study independently, the self-paced review is also linked in the bio. If you want to do practice questions, the QBank options are linked there. And as always, if you're looking to book any one-on-one -on -one sessions with me, I always say reach out by calling, texting, or email, just simply because I offer a variety of one-on-one -on -one session types. And I like to gauge what you truly need um, currently for your learning needs to make sure you're booking the appropriate one-on-one -on -one session. All right, you guys, y'all know what to do. Y'all make sure y'all meet me back here. Happy studying. Bye, y'all.